case. And this is the last sort of um, grab pack question that I have prepared. So if you have, if you have any, any other, bring it on. So which team is most likely to disappoint their fan base in 2021? Who, all right, who is going to let everybody down this year? Um, mm -hmm. Remind me, who did really good this year? Because <laughs> I, I usually just look at who did really good over expectations, and then I just peg them for a, a step back. Um, okay, well, let's let me interrupt you. I'll, I'll interrupt you. I'll, I'll let you. I'll, I'll, I'll talk about that. So, I mean, you could say maybe Indiana, but I'm sure the Indiana fan base does not really have very high expectations. Wait, Normally, Penis is graduating. I think he's staying. But, I think Penis is staying. Then but he's, he's going to make another run. They probably, yeah, he's that's a good candidate. People probably think he'll make another run. We'll see. We'll see if we um, fuck him. Maybe Coastal Carolina could become could be very disappointing to that small fan base. But that, I assume they also don't have high expectations. They gotta just, yeah, they gotta be happy with that what they got. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. That's um, ridiculous. Tex Texas, you know, they always have really high expectations. They got Sarkeesian, but. They know they're they're bringing you know they got a new quarterback, new coach. I assume they're not expecting to win the Natty this year. I would be so happy if that online would put up a prop. Will Sark get back on the sauce? <laughs> oh my fucking god! I really. What are the odds on that? I feel like the yes cannot be more than like plus six hundred because like how successful is AA really? It cannot be fucking eighty eight percent successful or whatever. Right. <sighs> Only if you ran a sports book, Tony. So I'll I'll give you I'll give you my <laughs> my thoughts. Here. I think yeah. old I think Old Miss could potentially be the most disappointing uh, to their fan base this year because this year the team was really fun to watch. Um, <sighs> Lane Kiffin coming in, putting add some like you know more juice uh, into the program. You think that they're on the up and up. But I think there's a pretty good scenario where Old Miss doesn't isn't even bowl eligible next year. So you have their top wide receiver Elijah Moore is not coming back. There's their top tight end, I forget his first name, but Yeboa is also not coming back. Um, their defense was terrible last year. Um, sure, Alabama is having like a bit of a rebuilding year, but like the rest of the SEC West is improving. Mississippi State on the upswing, Arkansas on the upswing, Texas A&M is still a good program. Um, LSU is on, is probably done with some of their rebuilding or through, you know, d done with dealing with the major hiccups of their rebuilding post national championship two years ago. Like I think you have the, and, and also in the non-conference play, um, Ole Miss is playing Louisville um, and Louisville was not very good, but I, I could say there's a, a one in four chance Louisville could could upset Ole Miss. Um, I think there's this there's a world where they're not bowl eligible next year, uh, and that could be the most disappointing fan base, in my estimation. What a goddamn call! Make a note of that. I gotta make a note of that. My goodness, Ole Miss to not make it. My goodness, <laughs> that's a hell of a call. I I'm like just saying, that. there's there's a world where they don't where they don't um, where they don't make a bowl. There's a world, you know. Where that it, happens. It, look, it's tough. It's tough when you got to play Bama every year. That's a hard living, right? Yeah, yeah. It's a and hard living. Right? Arkansas, because you are, you already marking off a loss, and the season ain't even started yet. Like, that's right. That's yeah. right. That's right. I mean, they're in the SEC. They play Tennessee and Vandy. So there should be two wins there. They play Tulane and then some like cupcake FCS school. Um, but the, those don't count though, right? Those are no, good, or do well, they? Yeah, those, they count yeah. for they count for a bowl. Oh, I thought those were just money grabs. I didn't realize they counted. Okay, no, then then Mississippi, Mississippi got to get six wins there. Maybe, uh, maybe. Uh, yeah, you get four. You pencil in four. You don't also like. There's that Tulane team by all the you know advanced metrics, it was not very good, but they were able to put up a lot of points and they were scrappy. They were a hard out. 
Like maybe Tulane with that kid Pratt has a full off season. Maybe they become a, a much more feisty, even feistier program. Like they could lose to Tulane. I mean, their their defense, like statistically, was in the bottom three or bottom four of all the teams that played last year. They could lose that's, to Tulane. That's real talk. Like that's real talk. Willie Fritz was on this whole good to great tip last year. But maybe the virus fucked him up. I know the virus fucked up New Orleans as a city. Yeah, maybe this is his good to great season. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so, Tony, I don't know if you have any other grab bag questions that things that have been kind I mean, of stewing. Look, I just got one thing to say, all right? Because I got caught up in the SLV pump and dump. And, like, I lost a nickel. <laughs> and I feel like a fucking <laughs> retard. And, like, I just want to say something. <laughs> No, I want to fucking say something. It should be possible. If the Hunt brothers could corner the silver market, it should be possible to crowdsource cornering the silver market. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> Motherfuckers. <sighs> Actually, do you know how the Hunt brothers ended? Uh, no. I, I also should have looked up this before I invested 500 in out-of-the-money SLV <laughs> options. But um, um, <laughs> but uh, but they, they did the same shit to the Hunt brothers that the Robin Hood assholes did. They just went, you can only do sell orders. Yeah, I mean that should be. I mean there there's gonna have, there's gonna class action lawsuit coming, right? There has to be. Oh my God! They told the Hunt brothers, if you do this shit again, we'll kill you, and like nobody <laughs> sued anyone. But maybe you, yeah, maybe you can't do that to all the shit munchers on Robin Hood. We'll kill you all. That doesn't work. <laughs> yeah, um, you probably have to kill twenty five thousand, fifty thousand people. Yeah, that's yeah, that won't work. I guess you know what it is. Is also Volcker raised interest rates at the same time, so their margin costs went up too. Like the Hunt brothers got squeezed out of their position. Like, I wonder I, I, if Jay Powell would raise interest <laughs> rates if we fucking cornered the supermarket. So, so this is so this is what you're 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 doing for the rest of between now and the start of next football season, huh? No, no, no. We don't. I, I, we don't. We don't have to take this pot of Wall Street bets direction because we can try and build our model out. Like we can think about how we would do that. Like we can do that. That would be cool. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So that's. That's going to be really tough here. So Bill Connolly uh, published his uh, returning production numbers. <sighs> We're going to have to figure out. So, I mean, obviously most programs have a really high level of returning production. Um, I don't know what the mean or median is, but I would assume it's much higher than in an average year because of the additional year of eligibility. So like a team, so like a team having, you know, that returns... 80% of its, uh, of its starters probably means a lot less this year than any other year previously. So I think we need to try to find a way uh, <clears throat> to dive even deeper than just those numbers and even more so than just percent of snaps or offensive linemen returning. I, I think it's going to be really, really challenging this year to come up with any type of uh, predictive model. Uh, but that does mean that the teams that have um, really low returning production probably this year are in a much worse position than your average team with low returning production. Oh, that is a very subtle point. I like that. Um, I like that. Yeah. Right. So um, the, the only sort of thing that I've noticed is basically within the top teams of returning production, uh, the top 20, I think you have half – of the Pac-12. Oh, is this the year the Cardinal does it for me? <laughs> I think this is going to with you again, Coach Sawshaw. <laughs> we'll I think this again. is going to this is going to be the year where I think you should just be betting Pac-12 dogs in almost every game. Mm. I think it's going to be extremely competitive. Um, anyway, so yeah, we could spend some time trying to build out a a, a model here or some sort of methodology at least for the first, you know, six weeks or eight weeks of betting. Teams we want to ride and teams we want to fade. I think that's going to be better than building out a, a model. Just because every single data point that we have from last year, it's not really comparable 
um, because we don't really know who was missing out on the depth chart from COVID. Like we could figure that out for every single game. Um, but it's just going to be way, way harder to do that. Um, so I think we need to come up with a, a proprietary methodology here, Tony. <laughs> All right. I like your style. I like, I like the sound of that. <laughs> um, okay. So Tony, any, any, anything else here? What, what do you got going on in the coming months? Anything up uh, on, on your radar beyond trying to come up with our quote unquote proprietary methodology? I mean, I'm going to continue making Wall Street bets. Like if people, you know what people should do if they want to grow their money at a pace faster than benchmark indices, they should invest in Palantir Technologies, ticker PLTR. That's a fucking thing to do. Like, How many and, shares do you have? Uh, 180. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm uh, in. Oh, and I and I have I sold a freaking put the other day too at twenty five bucks. So if this shit dips hard, because I think there's gonna be lock up period ending soon. I forget when, but that's so there might be a dip on that. And I'm like I'm gonna buy that fucking dip. Um, so yeah, that's my recommendation out there. Uh, did you did you have a good year overall, Tony, in the market? Did you I had a little bit of run here? good, yeah. Yeah, okay. I had a little bit of run good. Yeah. Yeah, I think right. I think everyone did. That's why we're all in the market right now. <laughs> yeah, no, but I exactly. Like yeah. even a schmuck can walk up and beat the S P five right now. Like yeah. anyone can beat it right now. Like why wouldn't you? And look, Jerome Powell might keep this shit rolling if this vaccine continues to be a problem. So you know, we'll see. <sighs> We shall see. The, but with ter in terms of COVID, the numbers are, are dropping really sharply. We got about 10% uh, of the population of their first dose. Just uh, hopefully those variants don't, uh, you know, unravel everything. And we're stuck indoors for another year. We got I mean, we I mean, we won't have it. Uh, so, you know, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. <sighs> okay, Tony. Well, oh, I mean. um, yeah, enjoy you know that what? Super Bowl, though. We got a good thing coming up here. I'll enjoy the Super Bowl, and I'll be sure to burn all of my blackface dolls, just in case. Don't want to get <laughs> caught on camera. Good job by you, Ben. Okay. See you, Tony. <laughs>